Hello, welcome to the show. As the famous salt and pepper song goes, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me, right? That's how <laughs> That's they say. That's a good one. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about sex. Yes. Can sex be an addiction? Um, how important is sex in your relationship? And that's something people don't usually talk about, mm -hmm. but it's what they think about. Yes, people think about sex a lot, mm -hmm. according to statistics, Women especially, as well? especially men. I would say men, anyway, <laughs> but I heard that thing, times are, you know, are changing. People are changing, uh, women are changing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we'll find out. Yeah, and whether you're a man or a woman, I'm pretty sure that uh, you think about this. In fact, we have a, a professional who deals with this a lot mm -hmm. um, and we'll be covering this topic extensively. Don't go anywhere. We're going to hear what the people in the streets of London have to say about addiction to sex. Can it be an addiction? Don't go anywhere. Sex is a 10. And why? Because it is the only thing that you don't share with anyone else if you choose to be in a committed relationship. I would say seven or eight in yeah, a relationship. I would say seven or eight as well. Why? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because, because it's, if, you, if your relationship is defined as just sexual, then 10, obviously, because it's just a sexual relationship. But if it's uh, mutual respect, mutual understanding, support, um, mutual interests, you want to be with each other all the time, and it doesn't always have to be sex, seven or eight. So, yeah. Of yeah, a good relationship is everything, not just sex. I think an, an eight. 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 If you're married and you want kids, I think it. I mean, it's obviously important because you have to have sex to have kids. So right. I don't know. So it's a six. More to do with kids. Like it's, yeah. Okay. What about you? What do you think? Probably a six, because it's not the most important thing in a relationship. I think it's a big part of it too. If you really love somebody, I think you. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Not, not, a not no, not a ten. Point. Okay. Your also, point of view? I give it a six. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you rate it then? One from one to ten. I'd give it a six because honestly, it's. I think it is important, but some people I like, think it's more important than the actual love between two people. Right. So tonight we have a, a special one ready for you. We're going to be talking about sex. First of all, the first half of this show is going to be talking about if sex can ever be an addiction, if it can be. The second half, we're going to be talking about how important sex is in a relationship. And I have uh, Owen Redhan, did I say that correctly? That's right. He's in the studio <laughs> with us tonight. You, you advise um, a lot of people who uh, consider themselves to have a sex addiction. Now, first of all, my question to you earlier when we were off air was, can sex be an addiction or is it an excuse for people to do whatever they want? Tell us the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the, 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 there are still ongoing arguments. With, with, even within the profession, there are some who believe that there isn't such a thing as a sex addiction. Right. But the vast majority of people, actually, the professionals, do believe that sex can be addictive. Mm -hmm. now, but that's quite carefully defined. Sex addiction is where it takes over a life, where it mm -hmm. becomes a compulsion okay. mm -hmm. and where the person really doesn't want to continue. It causes a stress, it causes a problem in their life. Mm -hmm. It can also be used to mask emotions. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, if, if somebody has an argument with your wife, they go off and have sex to, to mm -hmm. get rid of that Just like negative a drug, emotion. Then. It's exactly like a drug. It's slightly different in, in, in that alcohol and drugs um, are, are, ve are, are addictive um, because they encourage the production of a chemical in, in mm -hmm. the brain called mm -hmm. dopamine. With sex addiction, sex is actually a function of life. Mm -hmm. There are three things we have to do to survive. One is eat food, two is drink liquids, and three is to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. within an addiction, sex is different because you can't abstain from it. Right. What you can do is control the addiction, but then continue to have sex. Now, mm -hmm. sincerely speaking, I'm sure you'll agree with me that they are men and women who use the, the tag of a sex addiction to excuse themselves to do things they want to do. Yeah. Is yeah. that, is that, that, that there, are, there, there are there are especially guys uh, when it comes to sex addiction it tends to be mainly men um, because women tend to have an emotional attachment to the physical mm -hmm. aspect of sex with men they can just physically have sex mm -hmm. um, so there's no emotional attachment but there are women who have sex addiction as well 
But um, with regards to those men who say, I'm a, uh, you know, I have sex, lots of sex because I'm addicted to it, mm. that isn't by definition true. It has okay. to be a compulsion, it yeah. has to have a negative effect on your life, and it has to also mask your emotions and your feelings. And take over your life. Like and you take over your life. It really is critical. It isn't just, I'm going out to have sex tonight and enjoy myself, mm. and I'll have it tomorrow night and enjoy myself. Mm. It actually becomes a cycle of mm. negativity. Because, I mean, there are people, I imagine, that they want to have control over that, right? They want that to not be something that controls every, every moment of their lives. Because nowadays, yeah. with the introduction of the internet, like we were discussing mm -hmm. before, uh, you, you can have pornography on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, yeah. and on your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? so Abs it's abs absolutely. It's difficult to switch off if you're addicted. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is why there's still a bit of an argument amongst the professionals, because, in fact, an addiction occurs because there's an opportunity to have it. So for mm. instance, if, if you are addicted to drugs, that's because drugs are available. If the drugs aren't available, you can't be addicted. Mm -hmm. And what has happened in the past 15 years is the internet has developed mm -hmm. and pornography on the internet has just soared up after right. it and therefore it is so readily available mm -hmm. and especially when growing up uh, young men in particular see images of sex and that stimulates the brain to produce this chemical dopamine mm -hmm. that's a good feeling uh, mm -hmm. memory and therefore because they get a good feeling seeing it they want to go and see it again and get another good feeling and then it's just the slide into it's like a that fix. addiction it's a fix it's a fix like a drug you it's a natural it. fix because yeah. the brain produces it mm -hmm. the brain produces it because it wants the species to survive mm -hmm. so you know you you produce dopamine when you eat you produce dopamine when you drink liquids mm -hmm. and when you have sex okay interesting well, I have an, another question for you. I mean, I have many. Actually, I, I stopped a little bit there because I, I wanted you to ask a question. <laughs> I, I want, because usually they say it's <laughs> men that talk about sex more. You, you know, they say men think about sex more. But I, I want Elena to, I want you to talk about your side of the coin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. There's so many questions in my mind. The thing is, I mean, I believe that people at home, everyone, they, they, they need more, they need to be educated more about the whole topic of sex mm -hmm. not just the addiction side mm -hmm. of it because but so many things I want to ask but for example there's so many people we hear so many people nowadays who are also addicted to pornography mm -hmm. I mean I know it's all linked is to do with what you see yep. it starts with the eyes I think mm -hmm. your eyes see it mm -hmm. and then but my question is for example the person starts with a small thing and then it, it escalates like we, we mm -hmm. were talking about before the show uh, what can happen to a person if she doesn't get help for example she is addicted to pornography and then from there she does she experiments because she wants to she sees it one day she will want to try it mm -hmm. whatever it is that she's watching and then she becomes a sex addict and then mm -hmm. what what can happen to a person if the person doesn't seek well for there's help? an interesting difference between, between many men in, in, in yeah <laughs> between, <laughs> between men and, and, and women there, there, there are some generalized uh, uh, you know men actually are stimulated by visuals much mm -hmm. more when it comes to sex women are stimulated more by intimacy so mm -hmm. whilst there are visual stimulus for for women it actually has to be also tied in with caressing and developing oh. and a closeness like the touching like the touching Okay. and the kissing and everything like that and also for, for women they have to feel secure in their partner as well mm -hmm. so so because they are giving themselves to the partner so there is an element of you know do I trust this person mm -hmm. but you, you, you come on, you've brought up a very interesting point and, and that's how things develop so you, you start off with one visual image mm -hmm. and then you try something but because the stimulation because you've done it a few times then the stimulation decreases and then it's you feel not good enough it's anymore. not good enough anymore so you feel you've got to try something more or you've got to look at different type of sexual issues and that sort of thing so that something's new and something develops and so you go along that pathway of constantly trying to develop and, and move forward with it, your stimulation it sounds really dangerous so if, if you we hear a lot it's of like if you don't seek help where is it going to end right it's like you need yeah. to increase the it's, dosage it's, of the it's, it's one big train charging down a track and, so and at some no, point there's a potential to crash. So there's no such a thing as, oh, yeah, I'm just watching a little bit of pornography. It's not, there's nothing wrong Can with it. Can it be harmless? Can watching pornography be harmless? I, I have Honestly, my personal view on that. Me too. <laughs> I, I, I From think, what I've seen. I, th I think 
it's, it's harmless in the way that it will affect a relationship. It's harmless in the way that people will see potential relationships. One of, one of the concerns I have is with teenagers now growing up mm. with pornography being all invasive mm. is, first of all, how they see the potential partner. So because they're looking at it, it tends to be more objective. Mm -hmm. That's an object in your life rather than a person. So mm, the emotional side of things begin to go further into the background. Yeah. And with men, back to the visual stimulation. Um, and so when they're, you know, in a real life situation, there is a difficulty to be intimate with the woman or if you're mm. gay with the other man. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that is part of the difficulty. It, it will affect potentially the relationship. Okay, so it, it will affect. Now, uh, before we go for the break, because in, in the second half we want to move away from the addiction and talk about the importance of sex or intimacy in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Although sex and intimacy are different things. But tell us in your opinion as a profession, what would be some important steps in overcoming the addiction, whether to pornography or sex, because that's the other thing. There's no point of us saying, you know, this is a problem without telling yeah. people what the way Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Pornography and sex are, are all one same. It's, it's part of yeah. sex addiction. What would be the uh, steps to overcome well, this? Well, first of all, one has got to accept that you have a problem, that mm -hmm. you have an addiction, okay. right? Mm -hmm. You've then got to decide that you want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could be at the stage where you're quite happy with the addiction and it isn't really affecting your life that mm -hmm. badly. Sometimes, as I mentioned, the train, there's a crash. Mm -hmm. Your partner finds out or you get arrested or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that really stops you. Mm -hmm. And then what you've got to do is, is to look at why you do it. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just a case, it isn't just stimulation. That this, this idea of the sex addiction being just because it's a uh, physical sort of manifestation, mm -hmm. it isn't. There are things that set you off. Mm -hmm. there, there are triggers and you've got to find what those triggers are. It could be as simple as, I'm alone in the house, I'm bored, I'll have a look yeah. at the internet. Okay. And, and someone actually told me once that, um, I don't know if this is true, maybe you know more about this than I do, but someone said that uh, being in a dark environment um, connects with a person doing something that is hidden because you're in the dark, no one can see you, so it leads you to, to seek out those things. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure about that one. I mean, uh, that will right. depend hugely on the individual. <laughs> right. uh, but what tends to happen is that if you're watching porn on the web, you close the curtains, yeah. so, so there is a dark environment. Exactly. I, I, I think that yeah. might be pushing it a little yeah. bit. Mm. So, so the idea is, it's if the person, wants to, yeah. the person wants to overcome that, it's first of all, recognize you have a problem and, yeah. and you need help. Mm. Find the triggers, what, what sets you going. Right. Okay. And, and that could be, for instance, that as you grew up, you didn't have an intimacy. So mm -hmm. you've got a fear of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And that might mean going to a professional to work out how you okay. can regain mm -hmm. that intimacy and, and looking at, at it that way. It's also withdrawal. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually avoiding completely those things that stimulate you into uh, mm. you know, the, the, the sexual issues that you are looking at. Right. Um, and and, and it's, it's avoidance. The, the only thing mm -hmm. is with sex addiction, because we are people, we have sex. Mm -hmm. so, so if you stop having sex with your partner, then that could cause a problem within your relationship. Right. So it isn't a case of with alcohol where you stop drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. With sex addiction, you actually carry on having sex, but mm -hmm. it's avoiding the triggers to do those other things. Right. In the second half of the show, we're going to talk about the importance of sex, of intimacy, two different things, however, in, in a relationship. Now, if you, during this program, you saw that you may have this problem of a sex addiction or something that you can't control, then remember, if you can revisit this program on YouTube later or on our website, and, and remember these steps that are important in, in overcoming the addiction. Something important that I think um, about overcoming an addiction is to seek help. Because when you seek help, you have to open up about your problem. And that immediately makes you feel, you know, embarrassed about it. And I think being embarrassed about something because you opened up about it is, is part of the reason for not going back to it. Because you don't want to feel that embarrassment again. You don't want to revisit the pain again. You want to overcome it. So maybe that has to do with that as well. We're going to go to a short break when we come back. We're going to talk about the importance of sex, intimacy in a relationship. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now, it's time for us to talk about the importance of intimacy and sex, which are two different things, like we said, in the relationship. And, and this is the part, if you are in a relationship, that you cannot miss. Now, Owen, how, how important is sex 
in, in a committed relationship? At the start, it's very, very important. I mean, mm -hmm. within Western culture, the, the physical aspects, the connection physically, mm -hmm. is actually what drives a couple together. But as the relationship grows, and hopefully it does grow, and other intimacies develop and evolve, the physical side of things actually can become less important. Usually what I say is that at the start of a relationship, there's sex, but gradually what happens is it, mm. it becomes physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. so, so it's the caressing, it's the sharing, it's, it's development. Yeah. And I, I personally think that the, the intimacy and the sharing and those things can actually start before, and, and that can be a good foundation for the physical part after that as well. Absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the whole thing uh, about arranged marriages, for instance, is that the persons get to know each other first. Mm -hmm. They have similar backgrounds. And that's really what can glue a relationship together. Similar ideas, similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And then the physical intimacy comes in. Yeah, and sorry, I was just thinking as you were saying that, um, unfortunately nowadays there can be a negative connotation to, to sex, to it, the world sees it as a, a sleazy thing, maybe with the promotion of pornography and mm. so on. But I think that in, in a committed relationship, uh, the intimacy between the couple is, is one of the most amazing things because I, I usually, we usually say to couples that we advise mm. that mm. if you're living under the same roof and you're in a relationship, but there isn't that physical connection, you, you no longer have sex or intimacy, then you become flatmates and you could mm. be a flatmate with anybody else. So that's the one thing that distinguishes your relationship from a friend, for example. Because you, you don't do it with anyone else. Yeah, I, th I think you've got to be slightly careful about that mm. because there, there are very good, strong relationships that have been around for 50 years mm -hmm. okay. and perhaps there isn't penetrative sex, mm -hmm. but there is the physicality, there is the touching, the caressing, mm. the kissing. So, so remember, physical intimacy isn't just penetrative sex. Yeah, exactly, okay. yes, yes. And actually when we talk about sex, like you said, it's not just a penetrative sex. Sex can be many other things, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, that's... At least for a woman, isn't it? Yeah, uh, in a, like you said in the beginning, men see sex different to women. Yeah. And, and that can be, uh, I think that's the one thing that can gel the couple together and whether, like you said, in the beginning of the relationship it can happen with a lot more frequency than, than mm -hmm. afterwards, it's still something that brings the couple together when after that intimacy is over you, you feel really close, really mm -hmm. uh, united and that's a great thing. And, and every couple uh, expresses that, that in different ways, like you said. Absolutely. So some of them are more frequent than others, mm -hmm. some of them is more kissing more caressing, yeah. I mean... I mean, and this is what, you know, because sometimes what happens is that, you know, men in particular compare themselves to other marriages, you know, mm -hmm. and they say to the mate, oh, how often are you having it? Mm -hmm. And the oh, mate, yeah. because, you know, they don't want to be seen after 20 yeah. years not to be, you know, really <laughs> they bachelor. They like to talk oh, about I have it, it four times a week sort of thing. And the truth <laughs> might be once every four weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the guy says, oh, gosh, he's having it four times a week. I must have it four times a week. Mm -hmm. What is important is what the two people want. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, initially, there is a very strong physical uh, mm -hmm. drive. Yeah. But sex drive can vary between individuals. Mm -hmm. And you know, Absolutely. you could have a woman who has a strong sex drive, who wants to have sex four or five times a week. And you could have a man who's quite happy to have it once a month. Mm -hmm. this, this, there's a fallacy that men always want sex. That isn't true. And some, mm -hmm. some of the clients that I work with actually go into great depression because they're expected the male mm -hmm. clients, to have lots of sex when they're quite happy not to. Mm -hmm. But for example, from a woman's perspective and from what I hear and from people we speak to a lot, we, we see sometimes that women, they worry like this. They are married and it's like, oh, I'm trying my best to keep my man happy because nowadays there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. Media, they show, they portray perfect women. They, they show perfect mm -hmm. women, perfect skin, hair. and. Reality is that not everyone has that skin, mm -hmm. that body shape. So they were they were in this way. Oh, if I don't if I don't keep him happy, I mean, is is it enough? Like twice a week, three times a week, is he gonna be like wanting more? And I don't know about it. And then that will lead him to look for something else. Do you understand? I think I think it's you've got to be very careful if your relationship is just based on physical activity, physical sex. Mm. A relationship is a whole lot more. It starts off in Western culture, usually physical, 
but evolves into everything else. It's support, it's trust, mm -hmm. it's bringing up children perhaps, it's, it's working together for whatever your goals are. Mm -hmm. And therefore the key to a successful relationship is not necessarily how many times you have sex, but it's actually how you as a couple communicate, how you talk about your feelings, how you talk about, you know, if he's done something that you don't like, you tell him that mm -hmm. and that he doesn't get defensive and, and you mm -hmm. have a conversation about it. And I think that um, the unique thing about the intimacy between the couple and what I want to do for the rest of the program is to, to you, because it, between a couple is not really sex, like we said, it's the intimacy, right? And that includes the, the sexual mm -hmm. part as well. Uh, the important thing is that that intimacy is what makes the relationship between that couple unique because you don't have that with anybody else, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You can have, you can go and sleep with someone else, but that doesn't mean you had intimacy. So, mm -hmm. so that intimacy, which includes the sexual act mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. caress, whatever it is, makes the relationship strong and, and it's mm -hmm. important. And that's what we want people to understand. That, that, that part of the relationship is important, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and physical intimacy, uh, penetrative sex, is a form of communication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a woman saying, yes, I trust you. It's mm -hmm. a man saying, yes, I love you. Mm -hmm. so, so everything you do together is a form of communication. That's great. And um, just before, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, James, um, I know that many women, if they were here, they would ask you a lot of questions. But anyway, they can visit your website later and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if they want to contact you. Um, but is this, they, uh, they link, but you, you pretty much answered my question. They link, it's this fear of losing their men. Because although you say, and we understand, mm -hmm. that you know it's more than just sex, some women are afraid because there's a lot of competition. What would you well, tell let, someone let, let, who's let insecure? Me clarify. Let, me, let me clarify. If, if a woman is afraid of losing a man because she and he aren't having enough sex, I would question the relationship. Yeah. Okay. What is the relationship about? Yeah. Is it about just having sex mm. or is it about a whole lot more? So that's yeah. important. Yeah. The relationship should be about a whole lot more of which physical intimacy, which is what I call sex mm. in that sort of situation, mm. physical intimacy is part of it. But if it is the only part of it, then it's questionable what sort of relationship mm, it is. That's it. So Wonderful. Now, you know, there's something that's been going on for a few years since we've been married, and that's uh, we went to play tennis. Elena loves to play tennis. <laughs> this is a different subject altogether. But we went to play tennis at the beginning. Elena loves to play tennis, and she's been bugging me to play tennis. Now, we went to play tennis a couple of days ago, and we want you to watch how it went. Because a lot of couples say that is, look, it's a recession, we don't have money to go out and so on. And you can actually do that in the park. There's tennis, tennis courts everywhere. And it was a little bit of a competition. I even got a bump on my head. I don't know if the camera's <laughs> gonna show that. But let's see how it went. We'll be right back to the studio. One of the reasons why couples say they can't do a lot of stuff together sometimes is because of the lack of money. Mm -hmm. And especially because we're in a recession, it seems to be a problem. But we're here in a North London park to show you that with a little imagination, there's a lot of stuff you can do, right? Yes, uh, there's usually a lot available yeah, in your local park, like tennis, uh, some gym. You, you can just take a walk, actually. Or, you know, we are a lot for walks. You can talk, you can, you know, de-stress a little bit. And today, my lovely husband brought me to play some tennis. We've only what a miracle. <laughs> yeah, we've only played tennis once since we've been married and she's been bugging me to do it. So today seemed like a good time. So let's get this show on the road. Let's go. Wimbledon, here we come, 
right? So no matter how bad we play, we had a, a really good time. And I think who won? I think I did. You did? You sure? So <laughs> remember that with a little bit of creativity, you and your partner can do loads of stuff, especially in London. There's so much to do that you don't really have to spend that much money. And, you know, no matter how bad we play, we had a good time, right? Did you enjoy yes, yourself? Very much. I'm sure that you're going to bring me back because I saw that he was enjoying himself. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> so we'll see you later. Bye. Welcome back. As you saw there, there wasn't any winner. We just enjoyed ourselves, right? Uh, I won. Did you win? Okay. Of course Sorry, I did. she won. <laughs> <laughs> right, I want to thank uh, Owen for being on, on, on the program. It yes, was thank you very great much. to have you here. I believe you, many people had their questions very answered and, and doubts clarified. Now, the important thing to know about um, the intimacy between a couple is that it usually includes, it always includes a, a physical relationship, right? However, sex does not always mean that the couple has intimacy. These are two different things. And it is important that if you are in a committed relationship, you are able to share your intimacy with, with your partner, with the person that you love. But remember that intimacy can be a host of, of different things, right? And that should be developed, that should be cherished and looked after. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes your relationship unique to any other relationship you have mm -hmm. with anybody else. Remember that it's something sacred, something which should not be broken. If you watch this program and you have been affected by a sex addiction or a, a problem that you need help with, then seek help for that because I'm sure that overcoming that problem can make your life a lot better, more fruitful, and you'll be able to develop relationships that you couldn't develop before. Okay, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. We'll be back again with you next week. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Thank you.